Oh, well. Okay, good afternoon and welcome to the Australasian Supply Chain Institute webinar. Today, we're gonna to be speaking about all things ethics and the ethics management program. Um, before I start, and um, I, if you're looking at me, I, I haven't joined the Teskey brothers. I'm just cold in wonderful downtown Sydney. So bear with me and uh, my strange look. Um, I'd just like to initially start with an acknowledgement of country. So I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I'd also like to pay my respects to elders past and present. Now, we've got a lot to get through today. We've got four wonderful speakers, uh, maybe five. Um, I notice we've been uh, joined by our, our chair as well, which is wonderful. Um, and I'll do the introduction shortly, but a few little housekeeping things. Um, if you have any questions during the duration of the webinar, you'll notice that there's a Q&A uh, tab at the bottom. So please pose your questions through there. We'll endeavor to make time towards the end of our webinar to address what we can. And anything which is way too complex, we'll take on notice and get back to you. Um, but in all cases, we will ensure that we will respond um, in the coming days if we don't get a chance to respond in full during the session. Now, today, let me just have a look at this. First up, after we do our introductions, we will have Wayne Larson doing the work of the Ethics Committee and the pur purpose of the Ethics Management Program. So that's very much about um, the five of us um, and um, all of the work that we do. This has been a labor of love for many people over probably four and a half or five years now. Uh, whilst I took a, uh, a bit of a sabbatical right in the middle, there's been people here who've been putting in the hard yards all the way through. We'll then move on to uh, Stephen, who will do key target areas for ethical supply chains as expressed in the ASCII position statements. And he'll touch on the position statements and how we will be communicating those over the coming months. We'll then go on to Reza, who will do ethics committee tools and resources, including the member platform and the engagement discussion board. Hopefully after that, as I said, we'll have time for questions and answers. Um, we'll also point you to uh, our website and we'd love you to have a, a little bit of a walk through the park, get to understand this wonderful new website that Peter and Heidi have put together on our behalf. Um, just in case I forget or don't get the chance later, it's www.ascii.org.au. Now, let me quickly introduce our speakers today just so you understand who is on the committee, their background, and what drove them to become um, ASCII Ethics Committee members, what was their motivators. Um, first up, we're going to have our chair, Arma Adusam, who is also Director of Procurement Operations at ResMed. And the two questions that I've posed, a little bit of homework for each of our committee members um, for them to think about, hi, Arma, um, before um, the webinar commenced is, what is your personal definition of ethics and ethical behaviour and how has it impacted your daily life? And the second question is, what examples can you draw on regarding the ethical challenges you have observed or experienced during your careers? So. Let me just switch now. Arma, um, you're still on mute. If you could um, demute yourself, that would be appreciated. And it's over to you. Hey, um, hi, everyone. So I am Arma Edisam. Thank you so much, um, Mike, for the introduction. So in terms of um, why I personally joined um, the committee, it's because I think that 
ethics is very, very important in, um, in everything that we do. And for me personally, it's about doing the right thing, even when it's not popular, because sometimes for things from an ethical perspective, people want you to um, not always um, go with what everyone else is doing. And so ethics is like taking the high road. I think of um, people that are ethical as a bit of rebels because they want to challenge the status quo and they want to do things even when it is not popular or people are, are not looking, like always trying to do the right thing. So um, from my perspective, that is um, what I think of ethics. And there's, there's another angle to it as well. And the angle is um, one person's definition of ethics doesn't necessarily align with someone else's definition of ethics. And I'll explain why I say that. For, um, I, I'll give you a bit of a, um, uh, uh, an example that may seem a bit extreme. So if a mother, right, is um, extremely poor and has, let's say, five children or something like that, and there is no food, and you hear a story of, oh, the mother sold their child so that they can get food. When you're sitting back, you're going to say that is so unethical. Why would she do that? But if you think about it from the basis of, well, she is um, trying to um, help her family survive on an ethical, purely looking from an ethical perspective, saying, well, that's wrong. But from a survival perspective, is that wrong or right? And so I think that there is an element of looking at ethics from the point of view of um, the, the, through the lens of the person who is at the core of it. And sometimes for us, when you're being removed, it's so easy to point a finger and say that is an unethical behavior. But I think we need to have a bit of a, of a balanced view um, when it comes to ethics and especially when it is so nuanced. So um, th that's sort of part of the reason why I joined the ethics office because I thought, you know, we need to look at it from, from all that side and it is not probably as black and white as we think it is. So that would be my, uh, my personal um, view on ethics. Fantastic. Thanks, Arm. I really appreciate that. Um, you're right. There are many nuances and um, I think we'll all agree that uh, ethics is not being perfect. It's all about making the best possible decision you can at a given point in time with the information you have at your disposal. Okay. Can I switch over to our vice chair now, uh, Dr. Stephen Morse? Tell us a bit about yourself. Thanks, Mike. Uh, well, I run my own consultancy uh, called Unchained Solutions. So we uh, work with organizations of various sizes and types uh, to help them to address the issue of modern slavery. Uh, so that's a big, uh, a big area of uh, risk for many organizations, particularly in supply chain management. And so our organization, uh, we have a number of solution areas, a key turn a turnkey solution to help organizations to address uh, those risks, including strategy, uh, analysis, documents, training, and research. Um, I've been uh, involved with ASCII uh, for a number of years now, but most recently over the last two years with the actual committee, and it was a delight to be invited to be part of uh, the ethics committee. Uh, look, my world is ethics uh, in terms of actually helping and working with business leaders to unpack this issue and to help them work through what are their obligations in relation to uh, this human rights violation. And so my world very much is all about uh, human rights and, and particularly the rights of those who uh, may, um, for, for the, I uh, suppose the, for all intents and purposes, sit outside our direct responsibility. And so, that, and that's certainly what the Modern Slavery Act is about. Um, in terms of my understanding of ethics, I mean, I come from a Judeo Christian understanding worldview, and I think ethics really comes from a, a person's worldview uh, and their own philosophy. I think it's an extension, it's sort of the outworking of someone's uh, the way they think and view the world. And uh, as been you know, noted by Arma uh, quite correctly, I think there are certainly principles that we can point to. Um, I think, you know, if we look across the spectrum of, say, uh, religions, for example, there is very a widespread ad adherence to upholding, uh, you know, dignity, a person's dignity, honour, um, the, the right to live, the right to thrive um, in their own individual, in, in a person's context, but how that looks and how that's shaped is very much going to be different in different contexts. And so I think we can certainly say, um, uh, you know, there are principles and we can point to, for example, a UN Declaration of Human Rights and all the uh, sort of the outworking of those, that declaration in terms of the UN Sustainable Development Goals or the UN Guiding Principles on Business and Human Rights. There's lots of different sort of principles and frameworks that we can point to and, and hopefully um, bear, have, they can have an influence in terms of the way that we uh, relate, uh, bearing in mind that not everyone will uh, view those 
principles equally or in the same way. Uh, and so that's where ethics um, is also a conversation uh, in order to draw out some of the, the nuances and complexities. But I think probably what it's probably safe to say, we all start somewhere. We all start with some philosophical and ethical framework. And it's about working out how we can actually um, work together to bring about uh, those uh, solutions that will actually in engender life and, and dignity and respect for all. Fantastic. Thank you, Stephen. Really appreciate that. Um, like now to uh, introduce Wayne Larson, who's Chief Operating Officer at PT Blink. So uh, over to you, Wayne. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, I uh, quickly uh, joined the Ethics Committee. I'm one of the, uh, I guess, originals uh, to some degree. Joined the Ethics Committee uh, some four and a half or five years ago. Uh, and have uh, ridden the journey as we have uh, developed uh, the uh, infrastructure to support the professionalization of the uh, of, of the supply chain management uh, field. Um, my background is uh, I'm a, a, a business executive and operations leader that has had end-to-end uh, -end, uh, exposure to global supply chains and uh, many of that uh, being involved with sourcing from developing and low-cost countries and, and and that kind of thing and uh, trying to manage the, the, the geopolitical and uh, intercultural sort of uh, challenge of, of managing uh, uh, ethics and legalities across borders. And, and I guess to but the points of both Arma and Stephen before, it's quite a nuanced, um, um, a biased uh, uh, type, of a, type of a perception uh, that, that, that comes from or, or uh, uh, the, 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 the understanding of what is ethical or right or wrong uh, you know, changes depending on your your position of of, of perception. Um, my personal uh, worldview uh, definition of ethics is, uh, I guess, it's been influenced by uh, all aspects of my upbringing and and, and growing up in a you know, developed economy and 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 and, and quite a quite a safe and uh, and and protected upbringing. Um, from a young age, young age, I've always questioned the concept of just because something is allowed doesn't necessarily mean it's right. Uh, so decisions being made for uh, the uh, yeah, along legal grounds or legal lines doesn't necessarily mean that uh, yeah, the impacts are just and fair. Um, and uh, yeah, being able to think through all of the consequences is something very difficult. You know, as humans, we're, we're challenged to walk a, a, a line you know, every day between you know, maximizing gains, particularly in capitalist economies, maximizing gains or winning. Um, as opposed to maximizing benefits or sharing. And that, that conflict, I think, is at, at the core of my personal definition of, of ethics. Um, as I said before, I see this quite a privileged concept because uh, at the core, uh, ethical behavior lies some kind of power imbalance. And, and uh, the uh, people that are making decisions have, have, have to have the ability to choose whether or not they impose those decisions on those that don't have the power to make those decisions. And that power imbalance is is something that uh, uh, yeah, we see you know, played out every single day. Uh, and you know, much like uh, the ripples in, in the pond when you throw a stone in, you, know, you can't always see where the consequences are going to, going to touch and, and touch people. Um, as, a, as, a, as an aside, uh, this morning I was reading an article by uh, the ABC um, about uh, solar panel manufacturing and uh, uh, the ethical um, uh, uh, I guess underpinning the dark underpinning of of rooftop solar schemes, and uh, where it uh, stemmed from is that you know, forty five percent of the world's polysilicon comes from uh, Xinjiang province in China, in north northwest China, which is a predominantly an ethnic Uyghur population, uh, and the evidence is now you know, surfacing that the factories that produce ninety percent of the world's solar panels are manned with with forced labour from eth eth ethnic Uyghur populations, and they're powered with black coal power stations. So you know, when we're making decisions today to put solar panels on their roof, because we think we're doing the right thing for the environment, there's a, there's a consequence that we're not seeing and down the track. And that's really the challenge from a supply chain management perspective. How do you see those consequences all the way down and make decisions that are right and just, not just legal? Fantastic, Wayne. Um... I don't know if anyone else has picked up, but um, our speakers right through so far. Um, there's a theme there. It's called sin sincerity and passion. And, um, and I think that's largely why all of us got involved with the Ethics Committee. It was something that screamed out to us as an option on 
how we spend our, our voluntary time, but there is something in each and every one of us who was attracted to the opportunity to work on this subject. Okay, I'd like now to introduce uh, Dr. Riza Kiana Mavi, who is a senior lecturer at Edith Cowan University. Reza. Uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, uh, yes, I'm a senior lecturer in supply chain and project management. And uh, my research areas are um, eco-innovation and eco-efficiency analysis of supply chains and also modeling and optimization of transportation networks. As a researcher, I secured the National Competitive Fund from iMove CRC to optimize transportation network in Northwest of Western Australia to see how they, those networks are adequate for the future needs of freight. And Mm, I was the chair of Essex uh, committee in our school in 2020 and joined the ASCII Essex committee in 2021. Uh, in answering to those two questions, uh, I think for me the top uh, three components of ethical behavior are fairness, transparency, and uh, honesty. When these elements come together, they guide the individuals and organizations to act with integrity and make ethical decisions. I value them for as far as I remember, and these three components of ethics are essential for me as an academic because they promote equal treatment and opportunities for all students and colleagues. Being uh, open and transparent in communications and information sharing and treating people with integrity and uh, dignity and respect without any forms of uh, discrimination or bias regardless of their race, uh, gender, age or social status helps uh, to build trust and uh, uh, accountability. Uh, Making a decision might be very easy, but making an ethical decision might be a challenge. And I think uh, I am very lucky that uh, I have worked for several universities throughout my uh, professional life. Uh, the cases of ethical challenges in academia is uh, different uh, from other contexts. And sometimes the workplace exploitations in the forms of uh, maybe forced labor and academic bullying uh, mm, are happening in universities and uh, mm, which uh, these are very mm, uh, challenging for universities and uh, also it depends on the context of the organization and culture of the organization and both academics and the students might be a victim for uh, this kind of you know, unethical behaviors. Fantastic Reza, really appreciate that. Um, one of the things that I forgot before I tell you just a, a little bit about myself um, is for anyone who got on late, we are recording this webinar. Uh, the reason for that is, you know, you may get called away by the boss, could be a call of nature, things, life happens. Um, but also we want to be able to share this with a wider audience following the completion of the webinar. Um, so, uh, yeah, just uh, be aware of that. Um, Couple of things. My name is Mike Owen. I am a permanent recruitment executive with Omni Recruit. And I could just feel the eyebrows raising there and people trying to rationalize. Sorry, he's in recruitment and he's on the ethics committee. How can that be right? Well, it's kind of important that we don't make assumptions in life and there are good people in all walks of life. Um, I just want to touch on a, a few definitions that I extracted about ethics and ethical behavior. Um, even though I've been involved in this journey for quite a long time and been in the industry for 40 years and on different industry associations as a volunteer for probably 25. And yes, I'm still alive, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of, couple of uh, different definitions. One that I pulled out was Ethics are the moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. Um, my personal favorite is simply the congruency of words, actions, 
and thought. Um, not easy to put those three together. But the one that I really enjoy is something I stole from uh, the Ethics Centre, which was one of the organisations we used in the early days when we were setting this up and um, trying to figure out, you know, which way's up, what should we include, um, you know, looking for a pole star. And they have a, a test to ask yourself these five things. Would I be happy for the decision to be headlining the news tomorrow, otherwise known as the sunlight test? Is there an ethical non-negotiable at play? And, and Wayne touched on a couple of things before there where there are, you know, ethical dilemmas that come up where there can be multiple parts that just, it's quite easily easy to rationalise one over the other. Um, and, and this is the whole challenge within the field of ethics. Will my action make the world a better place? What would happen if everybody did this? So, you know, are you putting yourself above somebody else? What will, do, what will this do to my character or the character of my organisation? And finally, is this consistent with my values and principles? So they're kind of a, it's, it's kind of a trickle down test that um, when you have a quandary put before you, just um, run through that and see if you're uh, on the right path. Okay, um, that's enough rhubarb from me. I'd now like to, uh, to invite Wayne back to uh, speak about the work of the Ethics Committee and the pur purpose of the Ethics Management Program. Wayne. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, so I just uh, want to spend a bit of time uh, to explain uh, what the Ethics Committee does uh, and uh, the Ethics Management Program that have, uh, we have produced and, and, and we'll, what, what we administer. So. Uh, in, in summary, the Ethics Committee was established about five years ago when a decision was made by the ASCII board to move towards become a registered professional body. Uh, and that was an integral building block in the transition towards the professionalization of the Supply Chain Management Committee, which is you know, what, we're, what we're all working towards. Uh, the Ethics Committee is a statutory element of the professionalized program. We have to have an ethics program as part of the professionalization uh, of the of the uh, of the community, uh, but more importantly, it serves uh, as uh, to support individual and organisational members in their day to day practice when confronted with some of those uh, dilemmas or challenges that, uh, that that Mike was alluded to alluding to previously. So, uh, in relation to the structure of the of of uh, ASCII and what our purpose as the Ethics Committee is, is that uh, we're a subcommittee of the ASCII board, so we we are not. Um, a decision-making uh, community. We are a, uh, a sub subcommittee of the board uh, and an advisory body appointed by the board of directors to, to uh, execute four key objectives. And, and that is to oversee the ASCII code of ethics, um, to create and, uh, and, and um, to create and manage a, a confidential ethics complaint reporting process and uh, provide advisory structures. Uh, to review uh, any requests for advice or opinions uh, and to review ethics complaints made uh, and make recommendations back to the board about those uh, complaints through the, uh, the whistleblower policy, which we'll touch on in a second. Uh, to accomplish these objectives, uh, the Ethics Committee over the last four years, we've developed a code of ethics and an ethics management program. And they're the two uh, key documents that uh, that really drive what our activities are and how we support the the broader ASCII community. Um, inside those uh, that, that that program, the ethics management program, includes things like the grievance processes, which I alluded to before, which that uh, contains things like the investigations process, the disciplinary outcomes that can be can be uh, 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 implemented, as well as the penalties and appeals processes. So it's a, it's a fair and transparent process to, uh, for, for uh, members to raise issues and have those issues investigated and dealt with by the ASCII board. Um, we've developed a professional conduct statement or code of ethics that uh, 
uh, has the mandatory minimum standards of conduct and principles covering ethics in the supply chain that we expect all members of ASCII to adhere to. So when you become an ASCII member or uh, uh, periodically you're asked to sign to say that you understand and accept the terms of the code of ethics, that's really what that is all about. Understanding what the principles are that we set out as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an entity to say the uh, supply chain profession should behave in this way. And if it doesn't behave in, or the members don't behave in that way, then they're falling foul of you know, the, the minimum ex expectations of a professional body. Uh, and then we'll also provide access to relevant coaching, guidance, webinars, such as this one, but also training uh, around ethical matters, uh, training around uh, your professional standards and CPD certifications. So the EMP itself, the Ethics Management Program itself, it's evolved over time and, and will continue to be a, a, a rather dynamic program uh, to meet the ever-changing requirements of, of, our, of our community and the professional members uh, and the ASCII board and, and, and the objectives that the ASCII board has. So you know, it's, it's something that will adapt to suit the needs of the day. Um, and uh, the uh, and it's most, I guess, definitely intended to be a tool to support members navigate through the difficult challenges of, of, of working in a, in, in, a, in a global economy. Some of the, some of the uh, moral dilemmas, ethical dilemmas and legal dilemmas that we alluded to previously, we're really trying to provide a framework to help guide through that and to, and to answer in a positive sense those five key questions that Mike alluded to before. Uh, at the core of the ethics management program is the code of ethics and the code of ethics defines a set of standards of conduct and professional principles that all ASCII members are expected to adhere to, us included. Uh, it also defines the compliance and disciplinary processes that may be implemented by the ASCII board for members that breach the code, and that includes individuals and corporations. Uh, as, men as mentioned before, um, the, the, the other fundamental elements of the operational structure of the EMP is to provide a, comp comp a confidential complaints handling process. Uh, the ethics committee has developed for the ASCII board a whistleblower's policy, a privacy policy, and a complaints handling procedure uh, that gives all members confidence that ASCII is there as a body of support if, uneth if unethical behaviours are confronted in the carriage of professional duties. So uh, ASCII will receive, investigate, and impose measures within its remit for members that are found to behave in a manner that's not aligned with the code of ethics. And that could include, up or up to and including, um, having your professional registration uh, abolished uh, or referral to legal, uh, legal, the legal fraternity if something uh, has, has gone beyond an ethical di dilemma into, a, into a, uh, a, an illegal act. And ASCII will always protect the pri privacy of, of any individual to avoid repercussions or any vexatious claims that, uh, that, that could be raised. So it's not a, a, it's a robust process to support the, pro the program and, 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 and provide um, a level of uh, uh, robustness around the, the, the professional registration of our members, but it's also there to support and protect our members from, uh, from yeah, falling foul of ethical, ethical challenges. Um, and we'll talk to, we'll cover this in a, in a second, but uh, the ethics committee has also de developed a number of uh, position statements. Once again, these are guiding light documents to help assist members when confronted with, with you know, uh, common situations that, that, that we see. So, and they'll be rolled out over time and we'll cover those in more detail a little bit later, but uh, all up yeah, and, and just to summarize, uh, the ethics committee is dedicated to establishing a set of shared values, culture, ethos and mindset in the supply chain domain. Uh, and doing that through the mechanisms and documents and policies that we've established and supporting members with training, information and, uh, and, and, and support as and where we can uh, and as and where we're called. So that's really what we're about. Fantastic, Wayne. Uh, really appreciate that. And, and I can, uh, can agree that it is a very painstaking process um, pulling this all together, especially when you've got uh, a bunch of intelligent, uh, assertive and quite opinionated people, um, you know, you're going to have different views on how you should skin the cat. Um, but the documents, the whole process um, has come together beautifully. Uh, again, we invite you to ascii.org.au. Go in, have a good look through, grab a coffee, grab whatever, sit down, 
and familiarize yourself with all of the components. Um, not only is it an educational thing, but from your employment perspective, understanding the tools and resources that you have at your disposal as an individual, an organization and an industry that were never here before to support us is really important. Okay, now Wayne touched on some of the position statements. So let's throw back to Dr. Stephen Morse for a little bit more information. Great, uh, thanks Mike and thanks uh, Wayne for that. So I just had to share my screen. Um, I think uh, that you can see uh, that, yep. um, that's all good. Great, so yeah, so just to minimize us. Yeah, so uh, as Wayne mentioned, as part of uh, the EMP, we've put together some position statements um, and uh, these are, uh, yeah, we've uh, put these position statements uh, over the recent uh, months really to articulate um, what we're about as a committee and to and uh, articulate uh, that that more clearly. So really the purpose of the statements um, is really to address ethical matters that impact the practices across the supply chain. That's really the focus of those of those position statements um, because we will make sure we want to make sure that they're relevant uh, to uh, to members uh, and what we're actually uh, about as an organization. Um, they really express alignment with the current ESG, that means environmental, social, and governance reporting mechanisms. So statements, uh, they're not uh, exhaustive of that, but we point to some of the most pertinent and um, pressing uh, issues uh, the, that are in alignment with ESG reporting requirements for many organizations and how they impact supply chains. Um, set the standard for ESG members uh, in, in alignment with the EMP, uh, EMP uh, to ensure best practice, responsible practices um, in supply chain management. And I use that word responsible in, in, um, as opposed to say ethical, because I think it really points to um, a bit more encompassing in terms of what we're actually asking um, members to do and, and what we're about is actually taking responsibility uh, for our actions. And finally, they form the basis of the Ethics Committee communications and educational resources. So as Wayne mentioned, we'll be rolling out these statements um, through our communications and, and bringing to life uh, those, those statements with uh, case studies and examples of, and good practice um, so that uh, they, they, um, people can actually see how they're relevant and perhaps how they can also, um, yeah, well, cut and paste if you like, but actually use those statements uh, for their own uh, organizations. Uh, the focus uh, of uh, the statements uh, is, uh, is it covers these areas. So as I mentioned, uh, lots of uh, related uh, in alignment with ESG reporting mechanisms. So we have human rights, modern slavery, anti-corruption, workplace health and safety, diversity, equity, inclusion, economic, financial and, and integrity, um, compliance and governance, global sanctions and trade restrictions, uh, environmental sustainability and climate change. And I suppose one of the big challenges, obviously, of all this, of these position statements, are that these are all big areas in and of themselves. Um, the, you know, I, the same pit I play in is uh, almost exclusively on modern slavery. Uh, that's in my own business. So I know uh, the, the, the enormity of uh, some of these impact areas. Um, and uh, ethical areas that we need to focus on. So really, we it's very obviously in a position statement, it's difficult to encompass all the the fullness of these areas. But really, it's kind of like they're a, they're a starting post. They're a, um, in terms of really what we're about, uh, what we want to do, and what we are looking for in terms of our members, um, and and perhaps and pointing a way forward uh, to, uh, to to where we're going as as an organization and as a committee. And finally, then the format is very basic format. Um, we've got uh, the key message, um, uh, the expression of ASCII principles, and and the and action statements. So the idea of this is that um, very clear. What what is this statement about? Um, how does this align with the overall uh, EMP focus of the EMP? And then what are the key key, key steps? Um, because we want to make sure that this is practical. For everybody. Now I'm going to press this link and to see whether or not this opens up and it does so beautifully. That's great. Um, so then as we, um, yeah, this is uh, the ASCII website um, and part of it, and you'll see under communities and committees, you'll have access to two things. There's professional communities uh, and then there's pro professional committees. And this is us here under the uh, ethics committee. 
this is who we are. And then as we, if you go down here, this is all about who we are. I think you'll find our pretty faces somewhere on this uh, page as well. You go on to the position statements and there you'll have all the ethics position statements there. And if we just go into one, um, let's say just go into anti-corruption, you'll see there's the format of how this works out. So we've got uh, the key message um, about, you know, we're committed to promoting ethical behavior to prevent corrupt activities. Um, we, we support the establishment and imp implementation of appropriate anti-corruption policies and procedures and all entities involved in, in the supply chain of our members. Uh, this is, uh, and then some key uh, references in terms of the audience, the responsibility and when the statement was adopted. So that was this year and how you can be in contact about this. So if you've got any questions about these statements then you can actually ap approach us then the second section is in the articulation of the, um, the principles, and these principles will vary from statement to statement, so they're not all the same, um, but really it's about uh, promoting and supporting best practice or good practice, if you like. Um, it's about uh, establishing mechanisms and good, and good procedures uh, for, for members uh, in reference to the code of conduct. Um, and then uh, here we've got, uh, you know, ASCII, in terms of we'll engage with government and other stakeholders to advocate for strong anti-corruption laws. So they're the kind of the principal key statements that we want to make. And finally, then the key action items uh, that we want to see um, uh, coming out of this statement. And so that this is a, a document which is a living document. It's not static. Um, there's opportunity for people to respond to it. Um, it's not all encompassing, it doesn't say everything, but it says what we wanted to say at the stage and knowing that um, these kind of position statements uh, are really only make sense as they're communicated and they're in engaged and interacted with. So similarly, you welcome you to, and just in terms of the time restraint, um, welcome you to explore this. You don't need to be a member to explore these. You can actually just go onto the website and you can actually play with yourself and you can see uh, what we're actually saying in all these uh, impact areas and ways in which you can um, adopt them for your own um, organization. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. And um, I, I know it is our intent to promote one of those position statements each month for a period. Um, do you think we're in the position to be able to make that commitment to uh, our audience now? Yes, so we have a schedule. We'll be what we'll be doing in terms of the overall communications of the newsletter for ASCII. So it'll be won't be monthly. It'll be bi-monthly uh, over the next twenty-four months. Um, we'll be uh, speaking to uh, each of the position statements. That's all been scheduled. Um, that's courtesy of me. Um, so we've uh, scheduled that, and the idea is then that we have some time then to um, to uh, make reference to the to the. To the statement, maybe do some research, find a good case study of, of good practice um, and point to uh, other resources and tools that, that could be used that will aid in the implementation of that of that statement. Thanks, Stephen. And um, yeah, look, I'd just like to uh, take the opportunity to call on the audience that if they've got any preferences about um, any particular position statement they'd like us to uh, I suppose, focus on in advance of the others, then uh, please uh, speak up or forever hold your peace. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, now I'd like to invite uh, Reza to uh, have a bit of a chat about the Ethics Committee tools and resources. Reza. Are you mute? Sorry about that. That's yes, right. uh, now I want to talk about uh, events and uh, e-learnings and also those uh, tools. Uh, ASCII members have uh, the chance to participate in continuous learning through ASCII learning offerings. Uh, ASCII Continued Professional Development Portfolio offers ongoing professional uh, learning, which allows participants to maintain their practitioners and associate registration. This program ensures um, that 
has team members remain skilled and capable in their field while providing them with the critical skills that uh, could help them advance their careers. These uh, courses differ in terms of length and duration to cover the required educational and professional objectives. The certification courses that uh, are now available include certified in planning and inventory management, uh, which is offered in two parts. Uh, certified supply chain professional and certified in logistics, transportation, and distribution. These uh, courses focus on different uh, um, aspects of the supply chain profession and provide participants with a comprehensive understanding of the latest trends, best practices, and techniques. Uh, these uh, certifications are recognized uh, globally and highly regarded, regarded in the supply chain industry and provide participants uh, with a com competitive advantage in, in job market. Several webinars uh, are also included in the events uh, section. The closest one is eight supply chain planning red flags, which will be held on May the 24th. And it starts with the causes that manufacturing processes uh, don't meet uh, sales and demand forecast and finishes with the success criteria of supply chain planning. Under learning offerings, uh, the training courses have been categorized into several groups uh, to make it easy uh, to find relevant ones. They are supply chain management, integrated product, uh, support supply chain ethics and sustainability, procurement and supply management, operations management, and logistics management. After successfully completing the uh, final exam of those courses, you will be awarded a certificate and a digital badge that uh, uh, you can showcase on your LinkedIn profile and email signature. Furthermore, uh, participants will earn a specific uh, certification maintenance points, for example, 20 points for uh, planning and inventory management course uh, upon finishing uh, those programs. And uh, our focus uh, is on supply chain ethics and sustainability. ASCII offers a certified sustainable supply chain professional course, which is an all-inclusive educational initiative that integrates sustainability in the core principles of uh, supply chain management. Uh, this course is reinforced by real industry examples of sustainable supply chain practices. Those examples uh, consist of initiatives, goals, or ongoing programs that are implemented in various industries to move towards a circular supply chain model. E-learning courses are delivered by Educazi, ISM, and Unchained Solutions. For example, inventory planning for supply chain professionals uh, covers optimal balancing of uh, logistics capacity and uh, short-term supply and demand optimization from a planner's perspective. ASCII also provides six video-based modules. Each module is approximately 30 minutes long, which uh, cover different aspects of modern slavery across the supply chain. Upon completing each module, uh, learners uh, will receive a certificate and uh, uh, those participants who will complete all six modules will receive a certificate in modern slavery. For example, module two of this uh, series, which is about responsible sourcing and purchasing, provides procurement professionals with the necessary skills and knowledge to make a positive impact on their company's supply chain by adopting responsible and ethical sourcing practices. Uh, they provide... Um, uh, an introduction to sustainability and ethical purchasing and motivate uh, people to uh, meet compliance standards. Uh, for example, the uh, learning objectives of responsible sourcing, which are covered in this module, are uh, gain an understanding of sustainable procurement, uh, defining uh, ethical procurement and its importance, and learning to integrate the standards of uh, ethical procurement. 
Uh, these courses are delivered by Unchained Solutions, which is a professional uh, service provider in Australia that motivates organizations to lead in their fight against modern slavery. Stephen uh, is the best person to explain these modules if uh, there is time. And uh, Stephen, if you want to please explain these modules in more detail, please. Thanks. Sure. Uh, thanks, Reza. Yeah, well, I think you've done uh, quite a quite a, a decent job in terms of the, the time that we have, but uh, these modules can be uh, purchased individually and also as a package um, and really help uh, organizations uh, and leaders, particularly in supply chain management procurement, to work through a number of key areas. Um, so in, in addition to look, considering ethical uh, or responsible sourcing, we also uh, unpack what does it mean to do a risk assessment on uh, on your suppliers in regards to modern slavery risk. Uh, we have a module on policy development and the kind of policies that organizations will need, uh, which are in alignment with the go uh, government's uh, reporting mechanism, but also in terms of being in alignment with those uh, organizations that you have as, for example, corporate uh, clients and being in alignment with their uh, expectations. We have uh, another module on measuring effectiveness. Uh, so impact areas. So one of the key criteria for the Modern Slavery Act is around impact measurement. So how do we do that effectively uh, to show that what we're, all the activity that we're doing um, is actually making impact? And I think that's one of the tensions for any impact areas that we can be busy doing all, all sorts of things, but is actually having any intended re result and how are we measuring that impact? Uh, and finally, we talk about how do we actually go beyond uh, the, the, the immediate foundational steps into the area of modern slavery due diligence. Um, there's a lot of work that's done at the, the setup for many organizations, but the real work is actually in, in the deep, in the dig, in the deep dive, uh, where, as we've mentioned just at the beginning of this webinar, that's where all the fun and complexity and nuance uh, begins. So that's, uh, yeah, if you want to talk more about that, please, please let me know. Fantastic. Thank you, Steve. And thank you, Reza. Um, look, you know, like any toolkit, um, it's a wonderful reference resource, but it works best when you use it. So, um, yeah, go for that deep dive, as Stephen mentioned, and, um, yeah, you'll be surprised. You'll find things that are totally relevant to you today, and if not today, in the future. Um, before we uh, just have a little call on a Q&A, Arma, would you like to... I know we've um, given you a floating role today to give you the flexibility to speak on whatever you believe pops up that is relevant, um, anything that you'd like to add at this stage, and you are on mute. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, I want to probably talk about the um, benefits of being a member of ASCII. And so for um, us as individuals, the reason why you'd want to join ASCII is because it's considered, or it is actually the premier professional accreditation body for the supply chain industry. And it is really a trusted voice in supply chain within um, this region, right? So across Australasia. So why would you want to become a member? You'd want to become a member because there are a number of benefits to it. Firstly, when you become a member and you go through the um, accreditation process, you get to have post-nominal. So um, if you are in procurement, you, you are able to add registered procurement next to your name. And if you're in operations and logistics, you can add that to your name. And what that does, it, it really tells people that you are an expert in, in your field of, um, of um, uh, in your field, right? So you have a professional distinction there. The other um the other benefit is um, continued learning. So I think Reza um, spoke to that and so did Stephen around all the um, uh, availability that you have to get more things and learn more things within your career. So it is definitely a good um, a good benefit for a member because you can, you can have ongoing professional development. There's also the professional committees that is available and you can join that and you can participate in that. Um, Reza talked about all the online tools and resources that you've got. So you've got all of that available um, at your fingertips. So some are self-paced learning, others are um, joining webinars and things like that. Um, the other thing is you get to network with your peers and, and learn from industry leaders. We, we have conferences, we've got events, we've got webinars like one of these. Um, there is also the idea of... Um, Industry advocacy. So, as a as a as a body, we are we we look to advocate for our industry, and so being part of it means that you get to benefit from that. 
Um, lastly, there is a, um, a monthly magazine that is um, that we have. And so if you are a member, you get to have that uh, copy of that um, monthly membership. So all in all, it's really a, um, a, a great um, association to be a part of. So I would encourage all who are not members here to really sign up for membership because there's lots of benefits that you can get from it. So that is what I would like to add. And oh, uh, actually, I should uh, say all the information about that can be found on the website. So if you go to the ASCII website, you should be able to find all the information about registering and um, going through the professional accreditation and all that. It's all available on the website. Yeah, and look, uh, I noticed we had a question from my old friend, uh, Bruce Myers. So uh, that is also on the website, the uh, our cost of membership, Bruce. So uh, I suppose if nothing else, else, if you get on there looking for that, you'll find other stuff along the way. Um, look, just to reinforce what Arma said, and I'd like to thank everyone who has taken their time to speak today, but also to participate in the webinar. Um, we also have openings on our ethics committee. Um, being volunteers, it's kind of like the tide on occasions. People get torn away for personal or professional needs. So, and you know, like any group, it's nice to inject some fresh ideas something that's going to challenge us. Um, maybe bring your own version of an ethical dilemma to the group and see how we sort it out. So, uh, and I'm going out on a limb here, but um, do we have an email address called ethics at ascii.org.au? I love the stony silence. Don't know, or do I make that up? Hang on, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm fairly sure we did. I saw it somewhere. It could have been a dream. But um, if you have any questions that you haven't posed so far, and I noticed a couple have come up, um, please you feel see, sorry, free. Sorry, Mike, there is. There is. There is. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It wasn't a I dream. Mentioned it, okay. I mentioned it in the, in the position statements. Oh, you did? I, that's probably I did. the dream that I was thinking of. But um, That's the dream. The dream is this. Yeah, yeah. It's ethic. It's very complex. It's ethics at uh, <laughs> ethics.org.au. Yeah, wonderful email address. And please, anyone who has an interest in joining the committee, you can either contact us individually. Uh, we all have LinkedIn profiles. We're all real human beings. Um, you can use that email address that we just gave you, ethics at ascii.org.au. Um, but also, if you've got any preferences around what uh, position statements that Stephen should do over the next bi-monthly, uh, that would be fantastic. Um, let's see what questions we have. But in the meantime, I'd like to thank a couple of people. Um, Dr. Peter Nagel, our COO for uh, pushing the group to make this happen. Um, and Peter in his very uh, laid back style was uh, as pushy as he's ever going to get. But most importantly, Heidi Chow, who did all the heavy lifting um, from London of all places to make this happen. So she's supporting us in the middle of her night and it is sincerely appreciated by all involved. Um, while I look at these questions, what else have we got? No, it's all Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Okay, any final statements from the panel? Wow. Dumbfounded. Hi, okay. I think, I think well, we're I suppose, I what, no, I, I suppose I'd like to say. I mean, if you when you if you do join up, um, one of the benefits you, that we do have uh, uh, as part of the, the the platform for ASCII is an opportunity for people to engage. So there's an it's an interactive uh, play uh, with the platform. So we do actually welcome uh, your contribution uh, to the discussion. We want to make sure that uh, we're here to engage with our members um, on ethical matters. So. Uh, as well as us pumping out comms, um, we also want uh, so we, we welcome and invite people to respond and and have a conversation. So, uh, you know, we invite us. You know, we want to open it up to have a broader conversation on these matters. Certainly do, and you know, I know it's been mentioned by a very wise man that um, people are suffering from death by webinar to some degree um, since COVID and. Um, you know, it's, it's a great way of reaching out to people en masse, but um, have a think as you reflect on this, maybe when you uh, 
listen to the recording about any particular ethical subject you'd like us to focus on for potentially a future webinar or some other way of delivery. Um, and um, we'll certainly take it all on board, um, you know, in our effort to add value as part of your ASCII membership or your potential ASCII membership if you're not already a member. Okay, look, on that note, I think um, there's nothing new there. Nope. Okay. Send all your cards and letters through, remember? Ethics at ASCII.org.au. And we all look forward to speaking to you next time. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so Bye. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.